Hey guys, in this lesson I'm going to talk to you guys about calcium absorption and the role and importance of vitamin D in calcium absorption and why we actually need vitamin D to absorb calcium properly. So to begin, vitamin D is commonly absorbed from food or produced in the skin in the form of cholecalciferol or vitamin D3. Now this form of vitamin D is not the active form that we require to adequately absorb calcium. So what does it need to do? Well, when you first absorb cholecalciferol, it needs to undergo a couple of steps to be processed into the active form. So what it does is cholecalciferol actually travels to the liver and will become calcifidial. Calcifidial will then travel to the kidney where it is processed into calcitriol or the active form that we're actually interested in, the form that aids in calcium absorption. So this uh, brings up an important point guys, that in order for a person to produce calcitriol in adequate amounts, they actually need a healthy and functioning liver and a healthy and functioning kidney. So this is important when we think about patients with renal failure. And for calcium, calcium actually requires calcitriol for adequate absorption and utilization. So why is that? Well, when we look at uh, an enterocyte in the small intestine, um, on the left, we can see the intestinal lumen. So say you've absorbed or ingested some calcium in your diet. Well, the, the process, the basic process of calcium absorption goes like this. Calcium is brought into the enterocyte through a calcium transporter. It binds to a protein in the, in the cytosol known as calbindin D. This allows the calcium to be transported through the enterocyte and to the opposite side of the enterocyte so that it can be pumped out of the enterocyte into the bloodstream um, via an ATP dependent calcium pump. So why is calcitriol so important in this process? Well, when you have calcitriol, it enters the enterocyte and it'll actually bind to a protein known as vitamin D receptor or calcitriol receptor. Now this receptor is actually a transcription factor and it'll actually bind to something else known as retinoid X receptor, but that's not important in this uh, scheme. So when it binds to vitamin D receptor, the calcitriol will enter the nucleus where it'll activate a genetic program. So what does this genetic program do? Well, the genetic program will actually increase the expression, uh, the translation, transcription, translation, and expression of calcium transporters. So that allows the intracyte to uptake more calcium. It'll also actually increase the expression of calbindin D. So it'll increase the amount of calbindin D within the cytosol. And last but not least, it'll also increase the activity of the ATP-dependent calcium pumps to allow the enterocyte to pump out um, even more calcium into the bloodstream. So all of these processes will increase the uptake of calcium into the enterocyte and allow uh, more calcium to be uptaken or absorbed into the bloodstream. So what is the recommended dietary intake of vitamin D and calcium? Well, according to the National Institute of Health, the recommended dietary allowance for vitamin D in early life, 0 to 12 months of age, is 400 international units per day. From 1 to 7 years of age, uh, it is recommended that a person should intake 600 uh, international units per day and greater than 70 years of age 800 international units. So now what is the recommended dietary allowance for calcium? Well the recommended dietary allowance for calcium um, for infants from the ages of 0 to 6 months is 200 milligrams per day. From 7 to 12 months of age uh, 260 milligrams per day. From 1 to 3 years of age 700 milligrams per day four to eight years of age, 1,000 milligrams per day, nine to 18 years of age, 1,300 milligrams per day, 19 to 50 years of age, 1,000 milligrams per day, uh, 51 to 70 years of age, 1,000 milligrams for males, and 1,200 milligrams for females per day. And over the age of 71, it is recommended that a person intake about 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day. So anyways, guys, that was a quick lesson on uh, the role of vitamin D in calcium absorption. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.